Hi there, I'm Julie Henze, an art teacher and urban sketcher based in the Netherlands. I'm also the founder of Brave Brush Studio, a community for artists and urban sketchers. Brave Brush Studio is a membership with a monthly subscription that gives you access to my entire collection of classes, workshops and tutorials. And new videos every week that are not published anywhere else. But more importantly, it is an amazing community of amateur artists who share the same passion. I'm telling you about my membership today because this week's video comes from Brave Brush Studio. It's a 10 minute tutorial on how to paint clouds. It's part of a larger course that is called The Power of White. As the name suggests, this course teaches you how to draw and paint white objects, clouds and buildings. Today's video focuses on painting clouds. I have noticed that many sketchers avoid adding clouds to their sketches, but clouds are such an important part of any scene, urban or rural. They make your sketches more engaging and interesting. Okay, here it goes. But before you watch the tutorial, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Done? Thanks a lot. I really appreciate your support. Now, let's start painting. Um, I have here a, a reference and let's try to paint um, what we see, what the clouds we see. They are quite complicated, but I'm sure we can create a very lovely picture from them. Okay, so uh, we see that there is a horizon line and it doesn't really matter where it is, just let's keep it here. A little bit of some trees in the in the background, uh, not very, very important. So, and we do not draw the clouds because I think it's not really necessary. We will paint very freely and use this picture actually only as an inspiration. And by the way, I use a uh, cotton paper, 100% cotton paper. I tilt it a little bit mm, for for an angle, uh, so the water will go down. And um, I make my paper wet first. You can also do this on cellulose paper, but the result will probably be quite different because cellulose paper dries very quickly. So the colors flow less easily into each other and the edges will be much rougher. Okay, so the paper should be quite wet, but not too much. So before we start painting, we need to wait just a little bit. So, and in the meantime, I will uh, explain you what we actually will do today. Uh, so we will look at the clouds in the picture and we will paint around the clouds. And it's a very uh, quick, quick exercise, but a very important one, I think. Okay, and so for painting the sky, I will use uh, quite a large brush. It's not my largest brush. Mm, the format of my paper is not very large too. Uh, it's uh, 17 by 15 centimeter. So if you paint on the larger format, you need a larger brush, but do not use um, the brush, which is smaller than this one. So this is, mm, I think it's a size like 10 um, and uh, that's a good size for painting the skies on uh, quite small formats. Okay, so uh, what I need is the blue paint and I put it on my palette as always, uh, quite thick and my uh, paper shouldn't be too wet. It's important um, to check this and I don't know, yeah, it's actually something that you just need to, to discover for yourself, uh, how it looks, how it feels. And uh, sometimes if you put your uh, um, 
you paint on the paper you already know that's too bad so stop wait just a little bit and then you can go further when it's it dries uh, just a little bit so um and i start with painting uh, the sky so uh, around the clouds and uh, i do it like like this and as you can see these clouds are quite um quite uh, dynamic so my paint strokes are a little bit at an angle and as i said before i do not actually paint the exact clouds i see i paint an impression of the of the clouds okay so uh, here i see that let's add a little bit more color here so just because it's more interesting, I think. Here is also more color, but not too much. I spread it a little bit around. And um, yeah, I see that here is also a part of a cloud and I painted already blue but that's absolutely no problem because we can remove the color here and we can keep removing the color and if you have good watercolor paper then it's absolutely not a problem okay and um, let's add some just a little bit or it's not it's too much purple uh, here a little bit of purple to make it look a little bit more interesting and um, here closer to the bottom closer to the to the ground the clouds or the sky is, is uh, less bright. And as I said, we create an impression of, of the clouds, okay? An impression of the, of the sky. Again remove some color here and there to create a more interest and uh, soften the edges and um, here i let me see for the Sunflowers, I use yellow color, a warm yellow, yellow color and paint it just like, like this. And mix a yellow with blue to paint, to add some greenery in the in the distance okay and this is only to create some contrast in the picture so it's not necessary for uh, for clouds okay and now we need to add some shadow to the bottoms of the clouds and what i do is actually i create a mixture a very thin mixture of blue bit of purple and just a bit of you can also use some pink if you want to and just a bit of paint gray so it is a quite pinkish grayish color and it's not as um, cool as blue the blue color so and I added to the bottom of the 
of the cloud, of this cloud. Like this. You can add a little bit more color here and there, but not too much. Also here. Like this and also also here. And uh, it's very important to look, to compare the tones to each other. Not to paint too dark because the clouds are still white. They should remain their white impression, okay? And now we can add just a little bit more color. Again, not not too grayish. and not too dark. And if we create a too hard edge, then we can spread it a little bit around and make it softer. And for, especially for urban sketching, we do not need to paint the clouds exactly as they are. I have already said that uh, we create an impression and we also don't want to make the sky actually the main subject of the, of the painting. If you want to do that, then you need actually work uh, longer on the, on the clouds. That's a too dark color, I think. So, but this way you can um, can create a beautiful cloudy sky. And if we make the greenery in the distance a little bit more intense, not too much, then it will look better, I think. And let's add some, some warm color. Closer to us here. And as long as your paint is wet, you can shape the, the clouds. So I see that my purple got a little bit too far.
And so if we add more details to the foreground, our sky will look really amazing. Now it's a little bit too strong compared to the sunflower field. But it will be more in balance if we add more details to the sunflowers or maybe even paint something very different, like I did here. Here is the sky and the foreground are quite balanced and that creates an interesting picture to see. So go ahead, experiment, paint a lot of clouds of different shapes, add your own details and enjoy the process. That's the most important thing. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I look forward to seeing your clouds on Instagram. Please tag me at braid brushes to make sure I don't miss your artwork. If you like this tutorial, there is a lot more in braid brush studio. I have a lesson on drawing clouds with pencils and colored pencils. We look at different shapes of clouds, practice adding shadows, learn the kinds of lines you can use to draw clouds. We also have a lesson on the basics of drawing white objects. Understanding the basic principles enables you to draw pretty much any object. Drawing white buildings is a two-part lesson that everyone's been looking forward to. If you've been on holiday in Spain, Portugal, or Greece, you know how adorable the all white streets are and how impossible to sketch if you do not know the technique. I explain how to draw and paint white buildings using this reference from Santorini. Go to bravebrushes.com to join today and get immediate access to this course. And finally, if you're not interested in Brave Brushes Studio but find my free content helpful, please consider supporting me and my team by buying us a coffee. Coffee is great for creative inspiration. Thanks for watching. You're the best. See you next week.